and one go. Okay, hi guys. Um, so today it's just me. It will just be me. Um, Kawe is behind um, uh, meddling with the IT stuff. So today it will just be me hosting. Um, and welcome to the 73th Acre Original. Um, today I'm joined by uh, Wang Hao, uh, who will be speaking about the rough consensus later on. So um, today we don't actually have um, a, a ice breaking chat um, because uh, we want to give a little bit more time uh, for Wang Hao. So let's get um, started with the uh, opening, right? So a shout out to our engineer Shis for providing help uh, and Shopee for providing the resources required. And then uh, our COC, uh, please do not record our live streaming, uh, do not post advertisement in the live chat and say nice things to each other. So if you would like to um, share something with the community, uh, you can look for either poke uh, me or Kawe or go to this uh, link and fill in the form. So something that happened uh, this week, actually it just happened um, kind of like two days. Um, I think it's still happening uh, because we are in a time zone that's a bit faster than that. So uh, Rank Europe is actually still happening now. Um, and I think uh, there were a little bit of like commotions uh, that was going on uh, in our uh, uh, group. Uh, so. Uh, there are two things here. So one of it is RecoinJS, uh, which is a stage, uh, state management tool um, for React that was, uh, I think, um, created by Facebook. So I'm not really sure what's uh, this. So maybe I'll hear from one of you guys, uh, maybe this week or next week. Yeah, hopefully if you have uh, some time uh, and you have taken um, a look into this, uh, do and if you want to talk about it, uh, do reach out to me or Kawe. The other one is uh, Deno. Um, so Dano is uh, is Node, but kind of like just flip behind. So uh, it's from the same creator uh, DAO, um, and um, it's yeah, it one point out this week. I heard um, yeah somehow uh, I saw this on my YouTube, and then I clicked on it, and then like yeah, I just kind of also watch it. Okay, so. Um, that's it for the opening. Uh, and we have uh, Wang Hao, uh, who will be sharing with us about the rough consensus. So Wang Hao, please. OK. Uh, hello, everyone. Today, I will be sharing about the rough consensus algorithm. And so let's first talk about what, what is a consensus algorithm. The, the problem we're facing here is high workload. Like if in Shopee, in some promotion day like 5.5 five or double 11, there is much higher QPS we need to handle. So, we, uh, so there's two ways to handle this. The first way is what we call a vertical scaling. Vertical means that we handle those extra high loads by buying better machines, like expensive machines, more better CPU and uh, more memory. Uh, the the cons of the vertical uh, vertical scaling method is that it's expensive. Like uh, after some threshold, it's the computer can the machine can get really expensive and not economic. And uh, the second thing that is limited performance, like there's a limit of how performant, how, how good a machine can be. So perhaps it's not enough to handle all the workload we have. The second solution is horizontal scaling. That is we buy a lot of machines, but normal cheap, cheap computers. So with so many computers, we can connect them together and form a system, and we can get linear scalable performance, which means the more machine machine we add into our system, the higher the performance is. So that's why we call linear because it's OM. Yeah. And uh, for the second method, horizontal scaling, what we normally design, how we normally design it is using the master worker model. So basically we have in, in a system of thousands of computers, 
we have one master master node which store the state of the application and control everything. The other type is the worker that actually do the work. So for example, in Google Fire System, we have a master node. Uh, everybody, uh, every client, if you want to read a file from JFS, you connect to master. And master will have all the a map of, if you want to read this file, well, this file is stored in some other worker nodes. So the master will direct the client to those worker nodes to actually get the file. And master will also handle the update, deletion, rename or of all the files, but they only store the metadata. So yeah, uh, for the, in the GFS though, the actual file is stored in the worker node. You can have a lot of worker node. So they actually store the file chunk and they, they talk to the client to send or receive the, the files. Another example is Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, we have a con control plan, which is the master node. The master, uh, master node will handle all the client requests. For example, if, uh, if you want to update the version of the app you are running, you talk to the master, say, well, I want to kill those container. I want to create new containers, the new containers running the newest version. So you only talk, the client only talk to the master. A master will handle all the creation, updation, uh, uh, delete of the containers in the worker node. So the worker node will actually run the containers. So the problem we have here in the master worker model is that we have a single point of failure. That is, if our master dies, the whole system dies. So that is a very serious problem. So make in order to make our system more reliable, we can have a solution that is, we can have multiple master, like we can replicate the masters into five, seven or more computer, more nodes. So if one of the master node crash, it doesn't matter because we have other replications and uh, one of the other replications will be the new master. So even if one master dies, can continue to, to work. We have a new problem now with the multiple replica solution. That is, we need to decide who, if the old master die, who will be the new master. So if, if we can't, if we don't handle this properly, perhaps when, uh, when the old master die, there, there are two new, uh, there are two other nodes who both think that they are the new master. So they both start to handle client requests and uh, different clients have different requests. So they, they both start to manipulate the worker node and the worker node see this master want me to do this and the other master want me to do this. So it will crash or just don't work properly. So that is what we call a split ring problem. We need to avoid this. Another thing is we need to persist the data, like the old master as it is running, it, it have a state in memory. When we get the new master, the master uh, we, we have to make sure that the new master have exactly the same state as the old master. Because you can't just, because a master node died, the whole state change and the worker node doesn't know what to do next. So we need to have the same data as the old master, the same metadata as the old master. So that is what consensus algorithm about. This is the solution. So it's about provide a fault tolerance, like fault tolerance means we can have a earthquake that destroy the whole city and, uh, but as long as we have other master replica running in another city, we can still work yeah. the photor by allowing our system to continue to work as long as some of the servers are available. Like for example, if we have five replica of the master node, as long as some of them are leaking, uh, we, we, we should be able to continue working. 
So for, for here, the sum of the server, uh, uh, we might need to try to define it. So normally when we talk about things like pictures or raft uh, consensus algorithm, normally we need the majority of the servers to be alive. Like if I have, if I have five replica, I, leave, I, I, I need at least three of them to be alive. Uh, if, if only one of five servers are alive, it, it, it doesn't work either. So, but uh, however, there is other type of consensus algorithm or uh, yeah, that, that, that will work as long as there's at least one server available. For example, the chain replication, you can have five replicas, but as long as one of them is working, the chain replication will work. But this is not what we talk about today. What we talk about today is rough. So we can assume that we need the majority of replica to be working. So before I talk about rough, I will talk about Pactures first because it's really interesting. So the Pactures uh, before rough cre is created in 2013, uh, Pactures is basically the only consensus algorithm. And it, it is famous because first it's the only one and second is really hard to understand. Uh, th there was another algorithm called ViewStem replication, but I, I don't really, I never read about it. And it's, I don't think it's ever used in practice. So, so we just focus on pictures here. Pactures is created by Leslie Lampert in 1990. So he also created the, the text and the Lampert timestamp. Lampert timestamp is another thing used in distributed system. It's a logical clock. Yeah. The, the first paper about Pactures is the part-time par parliament. It's, it's written in 1990 by Leslie Lampert. And in this paper, he, he actually write a story, like he literally write a story about a parliament trying to determine the law in the land, in, in the island of Paxos. Uh, he chose the island of Paxos because while he is creating this algorithm, he is, having a vacation in the island of Pactures. So uh, the whole paper is a story. He think that by doing, by, by explaining Pactures in the story, it will help other people to understand Pactures, but it did, didn't work. So uh, nobody actually understand, uh, uh, almost nobody, understand this paper in 1990. There's only one person that understand. So this paper only get published eight years later. And uh, I think he has really get tired of people telling him that pictures is so difficult to understand. So he, he write a new paper in 2001, yeah, uh, called Pictures Make Simple. So the abstract of the new paper is the Pactures algorithm while presented in plain English is very simple. So, but, but it's still not. Yeah, you, uh, if you actually try to read the paper, uh, it's not that simple. So let's talk about Raft. Raft is created basically just because Pactures is too difficult to understand. It's created by a PhD student and in, in Stanford. So they, they actually do a experiment. They, they teach two different class. One teaches a student about pictures, another one teaches a student about raft to make sure that raft is easier to understand. So to achieve this understandability, raft divide the, the, the consensus algorithm into two sections. That is leader election. This part solve like if the old master die, who will be the new master? So it's the leader election. Another one is another part is log replication. 
this part solves the problem of how do we make sure that the new master, the new leader, have exactly the same state as the old leader. So uh, one thing that Raft don't, uh, doesn't solve is Byzantine fault. So a Byzantine fault is like, what if one of our node is doesn't run normally or is hacked or something? So we assume that on all node in his act in according to the rule is act normally. So we don't handle the Byzantine fault in Raft. So let's first talk about how does the leader election work. Uh, we need to introduce some some terms, some yeah, something first. So first thing in row. So a, a node can have one of three roles. So it can be a leader, uh, which is a master I used to talk about. So we, we will call them leader now. So leader will be uh uh, be the one who handle the client request. Everybody, uh, every client, if you want to talk to the system, you talk to the leader. It will also be uh, responsible to replicate the data to followers. And uh, you also need to send hard RPC to followers to rename the leader. So if, if you want to keep being a leader, you need to send hard RPC to followers. Followers, they need to receive data and uh, actually replicate them. So that's why we talk about re replica. Candidate is those nodes that uh, ask, a, ask a vote from others. They are trying to be the new leader. So we have three roles here, uh, leader, follower, and uh, candidate. Another thing is term. You can think about a term is the increasing number that every node will remember which term it is in. In every term, there is only at most one leader. For example, uh, Obama is the president of the last term and uh, Trump is the president for uh, in this term. So it's basically the same thing. In, in Raft, we have a term and uh, there's it's increasing. And uh, there's only at most one leader in, in each term. Let's talk about leader. So leader, as I said, you need to send hard BRPC because if you don't, people will just assume that you are dead. So if you want to tell people you are alive, you need to send up a uh, heartbeat. Uh, the other thing is, uh, as a leader, you need to handle the request from client and you need to replicate the state to the followers. For candidate, you need to ask other people to vote for you so you can be a leader. Uh, and uh, as long uh, once you receive the vote from the majority of the nodes, so it's pretty democracy. If we have five nodes and uh, you receive vote from three of them, well, you are the leader now. And uh, that's some detail called uh, candidate timeout. We will explain it later. So basically, if you are still a candidate after a long time, uh, you will just assume this term just doesn't work. Like in a election, like if two people, perhaps they both have the same vote and they wait and wait, they never have the majority of vote. Well, they just assume this term they suck, so they they are stuck. They, they just increase the term and uh, and uh, try to be the leader of the new term. All right, I think the okay the follower follower will have a election timeout. Basically, as a follower, I will be expecting to hearing from leader. I will, if leader doesn't talk to me for too long, I will assume the leader is, died, uh, is dead. So I just try to be a candidate and uh, try to be the new leader. So that is, that is the role. Let, let's talk, uh, let's look at the what might actually happen in a election. So let's assume we have a system of three nodes, S1, S2, and uh, S3. In the beginning, everybody is a follower and uh, everybody have a turn of zero and nobody is a leader. And uh, we have a, everybody have a random election turnout. 
So S1 have 150, uh, S2 160, S3 300. So uh, nothing happened and until 150. So this is when the S1 election timeout get triggered. So you will see that, well, I didn't receive any message from the leader. I assume that the leader is dead. So I will just be the candidate. So it will first increase the term from, from zero to one, and you will become a candidate and you will vote for, for yourself. Yeah. And then you, you need to ask other people to vote for it. So it will send the request vote RPC to S2 and S3. So let's assume that the RPC take really long time and uh, at, uh, at uh, 960, uh, uh, sorry, at 160 milliseconds, this two actually get uh, the election timeout trigger. So the same, it will be, it will assume that the only day is that it will get increase the term to by one, as the term one, and it, it will vote his, for itself. It will be a candidate. It will send the R, uh, request vote RPC to S1 and uh, S3. Let's assume that actually S2 and S3 is in the same place. So the RPC is a lot faster. So S3 actually received the RPC from S2 first. So S, S3 will check, well, my term is zero and the S2's term is one. Okay, I will vote for you. So S3 will vote for S2. And uh, S2 received the RPC from S1. So S2 will also check, well, my term is one, your term is one, we are both the candidate, I will not vote for you. So it doesn't vote for S1. So here we can see that S3 actually remember that it already vote for S2 in turn one. And uh, 10 seconds later, S3 received the RPC from S1, which we sent here. So after S3 received it, since it already voted to S2, it doesn't vote anymore. So it just say, well, I won't vote for you. And uh, 10 milliseconds later, S2 received the, the response from S3. So S2 can see, okay, I, I, I have a vote from, from myself and I have a vote from S3. So now I have two votes. Two is the majority of three. I'm, I am the new leader now. And uh, S1 will see that both S2 and S3 refuse to vote for it. So it just still only have one vote. So currently the situation is that S2 know that it is leader now. And uh, S1 st still think that it's a uh, candidate. And S3 think that it's the follower. And then S2, since it becomes a leader, it will start to send a uh, heartbeat RPC. So you send heartbeat RPC to S1 and S3. S1 will see that, okay, you are the new leader. I will become the follower again. And uh, uh, so does S3. So that is how we do the election in the basic form. So that is how we get from nobody is a leader to have one leader. There are some questions can be asked, like what if everybody become a candidate at exactly the same time? Nobody will ever have a majority vote. Well, that is the case here. In the beginning, everybody is a follower and everybody have a timeout of 150. So they will both, they will all become the candidate in 150. They will all vote for themselves and uh, as you can see, they will all send request votes to other people. And the other people will all respond with no. So what will happen is that everybody, after a long time, everyone is still candidate and uh, still only have one, vo uh, one vote from themselves. That is what does the candidate timeout used for. So it's also a random number generated. Uh, for example, in this case, S1 actually it, it start to be a candidate 
here. So 100 milliseconds later, it did a check. I'm still the candidate. So I will increase the term. So the term is now increased from one to two and then you will vote for itself. And you will have another, a new candidate timeout generated. It will do the same thing, just request vote from S2 and S3 and S2 and S3 will check, well, you have a larger term than us. Okay, so you are the boss, we will vote for you. And uh, later S1 will receive two votes and uh, you will get all three votes. And it's a leader now. So that is how we solve the problem. If like everyone, if we don't have a majority, actually we just wait for someone else to increase their turn and uh, start from the beginning again until we have a majority vote and then new new leader will be generated. A new question is what 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 if a there is a network partition. Like if we have five nodes and uh, three of them in, in city one and uh, two of them in city two, uh, if the network doesn't work between those two cities, what will happen is that only partition A will be able to elect a new leader. The nodes in partition B just simply don't work. Yeah. Yeah. So only the, the, the partition with the majority will, will get to work. If, if there are five partition and no, no partition is have the majority, just everybody time. It's some more urge case. So it's okay if you don't. Uh, the the, the urge case is that what if we have a symmetric network partition? Like what if A and C can talk, C and B can talk, but A and B can talk and cannot talk. So if either A or B become leader, the other one will just assume the leader is dead and uh, start a new election. So the problem is basically A is a new leader and after some time B think A is dead. So B start a new election and since B can vote for itself and uh, can get vote from C, it will become the new leader. And then same story again, it will think B is a dead. So the same. The solution we have a, we have a list or pro pre-vote. So basically, uh, the follower will make sure that, uh, for example, uh, for 100 milliseconds, uh, if the old leader have talked to me within the previous 100 milliseconds, I will not vote for the new candidate. So that's what, what we call the pre-vote. So C, as long as you can talk to A, you will never vote for B. So, so that's all the problem. The takeaway here is that in each term, there is at most one leader. There can be zero leader in some situation. And uh, this leader can communicate with the majority of the nodes since it need to talk to the majority of the nodes in order to be a leader. That is the first problem we have, leader in action. The second problem we have is persist state like how do we make sure that the, the new leader have exactly the same state as the old leader? So the first thing we do is the state machine. We instead of actually store the whole state of the application, we store the log. That is mean if we have, a, if we need to create something like uh, Redis, uh, instead of create the, instead of store the state, we store the log that lead to this state. For example, we have a log of three commands and uh, each command will, will contain the term that is created in. So the first command set x to zero, uh, uh, to one. The second command set x to two. The third command set y to one. So the finally what we got is x is two and y is one. So we actually only store log. We never store the state. The second thing is that we hide log by default. Like, for example, for example if the client talk to us, they insert this log, we will actually hide it from the application, from the database, until we have replicated this log in the majority of the nodes. So we only show the committed log to the application when we 
uh, replicate the log to the majority. So uh, I will I will tell you the reason behind it later. So uh, first let's let, let's look at how do how does the leader do the replica replication. So uh, when you receive the new command, you actually need to uh, replicate this new command to all the followers. So let's say we have a leader of eight log and we have the follower, it only have five log. How do we make sure that the replica, uh, replica uh, the last three logs to the follower? We will send RPC. So in the first RPC, we will, we will ask the follower, do you have a log at index eight with turn three? The follower will say no. So we will continuously uh, move forward like uh, from eight, uh, it doesn't match. From seven, it doesn't match. From six, it don't. It doesn't match. Until we, uh, when we, uh, when we get the, when the cursor get to five, it match. So this is when the follower say, okay, I match. I will replica. Everything follow this. So this is the simplest uh, situation, but this is basically everything about replicate. So I will stop here. The thing I want to talk about is majority. So why do we hide a command before it's replicated to the majority? Why do we only show the commands to the application after it's replicated to the majority? Because there's one thing about majority that is uh, two majority always overlap. Let's, uh, for example, in this five nodes, the majority is three. So if uh, one, two, three is a majority, you select any three other. Uh, if you try to create another majority, you select. You have to select at least three nodes. And uh, if you select three nodes, you have to at least select one of one, two, three. So let's say this is majority A. If you want to create a majority B, you can get four, you can get five, and then you have to select one of one, two, three. So two majority must overlap with each other. So this is the thing, uh, the rule. So how do we make sure the new leader got have exactly the same log of the old leader? So that is, during the election, like uh, remember when we talk about leader election, we, we, we say that the follower just check for the term and uh, vote for the first candidate that ask it to vote. Well, that is not the whole story. It actually do another check. That is, it only vote for the candidate if the candidate's log is at least up, as exactly updated as my log. Like example, if S3 received the request from S2. S2 want S3 to vote for itself. So S3 will actually check. Do uh, uh, let me see your logs. If your log is as updated as mine, well, I will vote for you. But if if your log is like too stale, uh, you don't have any log that I have, well, I won't vote for you. So that is how. Uh, that is just a rule. So this rule will achieve our goal. For example, uh, if we replicate a new command in one, two, three, um, and then in the next election, one, two, three, if four ask two to vote for itself, two will see that four doesn't have the new uh, new log. So two won't so two won't vote for four. So one, two, three will only vote for within this group and uh, they will never vote for for or in state of the old leader or to put it more concisely the new leader will always have all the committed logs uh, committed i mean if the log is replicated in the majority we will commit it we will show it to the application so the proof of why does the new leader always have the all the committee log 
this. So let's assume a log L1 is committed. If it's committed, it means that it's replicated to the majority of nodes. Let's say that the majority of nodes that have L1 is M1. And in order to be a new leader, you need to receive votes from the majority of nodes. So let's call the majority of nodes that vote for the new leader M2. So we have a log L1 and M1 is all the nodes that replicated A1. M2 is all the nodes that vote for the new leader. Since the majority rule, there must be at least one node A, such that A belongs to M1, and uh, also A belongs to M2, because M1 and M2 are both majority. So two majority must overlap. Let's assume they only overlap at node A, or at least let's say node A is one of the nodes that is overlap between M1 and M2. So since A belong to M1, so A have L1, because M1 is all the nodes that have L1, so A belong to M1, so A have L1. And also, since we only vote for the leader, if, if the leader's log is at least as updated to us. So since node A voted for the new leader, so the new leader's log is as updated as A. So the new leader must have A1. I think that, that, that's all. So that is why we say the new leader must have all the committed logs of the old leader. There might be cases where the new leader don't have uh, don't have the uh, some uncommitted logs, but that, that will be okay. Uh, this is the core of draft. So we solve one problem of leader election, and then we solve another problem of data persist. That's all. The next step is let's get into the practice, the implementation, like how now I know about Raft, how do I write it? So it's actually really easy. So there is one cheat sheet you can find in the paper. It's basically pseudocode. So it defines all the RPC arguments and results and uh, how should you handle the RPC. Yeah, it's basically a really detailed design. So if you want, you can take a look at it. And uh, if you want some more production, production level implementations, you can go to, you can check out the ETCD. It's written in Golan and uh, Thai PV. They also have a rough implementation in Rust. Most of the this implementation are pretty standalone, so you don't actually need to know about ETCD or TIKV to to read them. Another optimization is that remember we say that we only store log, but if we only store log, there is possibility if we run for a lo long time, the log are too much, too many logs. Uh, so for some time we uh, appear radically, we might take a snapshot and uh, delete all the lo logs uh, before. So if we have 1,000 logs, perhaps we can delete the first 901 and just take a snapshot, snapshot and only return the, the rest log. So we don't need to store everything that had ever happened. Uh, this is called uh, log compaction. Another thing is faster match. So remember when we talk about the replication, we, we, we need to move the cursor one by one, one by one, one by one. So there's a situation where the follower is like really stale. Like what if the leader have 1,000 log uh, missed in the follower? So we can do faster match. So I won't talk in detail because it doesn't really matter, but uh, you can read the paper. Uh, sorry, paper just doesn't really talk about it that much. You have like one paragraph. 
it's actually easy. So I will just skip this. And uh, if you want to write the application on top of Rust, it's really straightforward. You just uh, you just need to handle the log and uh, read the log and apply them and get your state. And the Rust will handle everything else for you. So we talk about packages before. Uh, I will give a brief introduction of Paxos. The Paxos algorithm described in the described in the paper that we talk about the Parliament paper is it, it actually only select one value. Like only select okay, everybody agree we agree on one. That is it. That's everything that Paxos do. Only select one value. So in practice, we need to implement something called multi Paxos. Uh, it's not clear what exactly is multi -packages. It basically is anything that you read the packages paper and you implement a system and you can call it a matrix. Uh, you can call yourself multi, multi -packages. So uh, because the, the writing is also very vague about how to implement multi -packages. Actually, Raft can be seen as one of the, the implementation of multi -packages. They have a lot of variation, but in general, it look very similar. For example, in Paxos, in multi Paxos, we also use log to re represent the state. We also re rely on the majority to resolve the conflict. We also only commit the log when when the when the log is replicated to the majority. And in, the, in Paxos, there is also a concept of term. So in Paxos is the round number plus the server ID. The difference is that in Paxos, when we compare multi Paxos with Rust, any node in Paxos can be a leader. So it doesn't have, it, it don't have the check. So the leader will actually learn from the followers about the, the, the absent committee logs if we have some absence. And Paxos support out of order coming. For example, uh, we, we talk about the, the log in Rob, you have to be applied from zero to to, to above, you know, one, two, three. You, you, can't, you can't skip anything, but in Paxos, you can do out of order coming. Another thing we talk about is chain replication. We, we see that it, it, this thing can work as long as there's one server remains. So how what is chain replication is that you just chain multiple servers together and all the write requests need to be handled by the head. All the read requests need to be handled by tail. So yeah, you, I think it's quite straightforward to why why does it work. So let's say if something in the middle crash, you, know, you just had it connect to the next one and uh, you just Okay, I write, for example, you, if you need write to x to one, head will store that and uh, tell another, tell the next, next will store x to one and tell the next, next will tell x to one and tell the tail. So tail will, when, when we read from tail, if the uh, command have been passed to tail, you will get the newest value. Uh, uh, so it's really simple and it's used in some simple system like elastic block storage. The, uh, the good thing about it is that it's just really simple. So the, but the bad thing is that you still need a coordinator. Like what if uh, this one and this one, they, they have a partition and you, you need a coordinator to, to tell that there's something wrong and uh, relink the chain. Another thing that the throughput is limited by the slowest node. Uh, if one, one node is like out of memory and really, really slow, the whole uh, process will be stuck there. Another comparison make, uh, we can make is with peer to peer consistency, like uh, Bitcoin. Uh, we also talk about re replicating the locks in Bitcoin, replicate the block in Bitcoin, but uh, across multiple nodes, uh, uh, of course, uh, in Bitcoin, the no nodes count is a lot larger than Raft. 
uh, there is something similar between Bitcoin and uh, Raft. One is that they both have a proposer. Like in Raft, we, we choose who can propose the new log by using the election, uh, the legal election. And in Bitcoin peer-to-peer, -peer, we use the hash calculation, like whoever first calculation the mouse, uh, the right hash will get to create a new block. So that's similar with, uh, we all have a proposal. And uh, that it's also similar in how do they handle the conflict. In com uh, if that's a conflict, the majority win. Like if three, if three, three node uh, say in index 10, we have this command and other two node say we have other, other command. Well, only the majority will be able to elect the leader and the leader will resolve the conflict by deleting anything that is conflict with itself. So if that's the confliction in Raft, it will just resolve them by using the majority. And in Bitcoin, at least, the, it's actually the exact thing. So in, uh, in peer to peer system, we decide the who win by compare the length of the, of the logs. So uh, it leads to the fact that the majority, like uh, if everybody uh, see this is a longer uh, logs, well, I will, they will join this. So if you're, you are the longer one, everybody will join you. So you will, uh, in the end, you will be the majority. So similarly, peer-to-peer uh, -peer also using the majority win strategy to solve the conflict, but it's more like less straightforward because it's using the uh, length comparison. Okay, that, that is all, uh, all of my sharing. All right, thank you, Wang Hao. So um, thank you for the amazing uh, uh, lecture about um, <laughs> rough, consensus, uh, rough consensus. So we have a couple of questions from um, the audience. Uh, so uh, Chen Chen has a question um, of uh, how, how do you keep track of the total live nodes at the moment? Uh, yeah, that's the one thing I, I miss out is that in the basic raft, you need to uh, set the group in the beginning. Like when you create your raft system, you need to say, I have five nodes here and their IP address is this, and let's talk to each other. If you want to change the membership, let, let's, if you want to delete a node or if you want to add more node, you, you need to, there's another thing called the membership ch change is in the paper, but I never read it. So <laughs> I didn't share it, but yeah, it's possible. Mm, okay. Um, we have another question from uh, Kenrick. Uh, so this means that uh, everyone would send an RPC to everyone else, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, not everyone, leader will send RPC to everyone else. Uh, during the election phase? Yes, yes. Okay, um, then Ricky has another question for, um, when there's a case uh, that there are two candidates requesting for election, then mm -hmm. each voter needs to determine who to vote for. So that's uh, what's happening, right? So mm -hmm. when the vote- Whose log is as updated as you, like if two, Candidate both want to be the leader, and uh, let's assume that they both have the newest log. So you just vote for the first one. Uh, okay. And the first you receive the RPC from, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, then we have a follow up question from Chen Chen. Uh, mm -hmm. So this means that uh, potentially Raft is not easy to extend in real time? Uh, no, no. Uh, the, the membership change is already written and uh, approved in the paper. Yeah, so you can you can change the, you can add node, you can delete node uh, in the wrong time. Yeah, it just, I, I, I don't know. So I, I don't know how to do it. So yeah, I didn't read it, so it, yeah. But it's possible, uh, it, it's okay, yeah. Okay, uh, we have another question from Huizing. 
Um, so it's talking about the case where uh, election uh, mm -hmm. occurs. So um, if the minority is discarded, uh, what is the implication in the real world scenario where the state change is in initiated by a client? Uh, does the client receive uh, an error message that their transaction failed or? Mm, yeah, uh, so basically you can just tell the client, like if you find the, the, the log corresponding to the client request is somehow deleted, you just tell the client it's deleted and the client just retract. Uh, okay. Um, I think that is uh, all the questions that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, some of us are looking forward uh, to Professor uh, Wang Hao's part two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's uh, all for today uh, that we have uh, for Aki. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll see you guys next week. See you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Uh.